Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tides of Death. Our players and characters can sleep the night away. Waking up comfortably rested-ish the next morning, minus the bear wounds all over you. Um, mm -hmm. In the morning, I wake up. And I think, man, that was a fucking wild dream. And then I try to stand up, and my stomach hurts, and my legs ache. And I realize that it wasn't a dream, and I'm still, like, sort of bleeding. I, I think I'm first awake, right? And I, mm -hmm. I look around at the party, and I look over the three of them, and, and then I think, wait, did Sale say something about a cult? And what was going on with those bears' eyes? And something about tree wind? What the fuck? And uh, I just, like, clap my hands. Oi! All right, wake up, everyone. Get up. Time to go. And I'm sleeping around. I go over, and I, like, sort of kick Sale awake, and, like, kick Norm awake, and then... I just crouch down next to Archie and sort of gently shake him awake. <laughs> <laughs> Since he saves my ass. Every time. Lame what the fuck fantasy. happened last night? Well. I think. Fucking bears, man. They just came up on me. I'm unlucky. Beautiful, I'm unlucky. beautiful tree girls. Archie right, was I'm... kidnapped by the uh, the cult that's on this island. Those people, those townspeople, uh, uh, they, uh, they charmed him. They took him Evil in the night cult. and I saved him. The ocean oh, yeah. man, the guy whose name we can't say. Yep. Uh, I think uh, five of them were pulled into the water, uh, which was enough of a distraction for me to get Archie out of there. You guys wouldn't wake up, but, you know, I had to go save Archie. I thought wait, there was wait, something suspicious wait. happening. So some cult members from the village distracted Archie and tried to kidnap him. Yeah, and I think they were with them too. Because they, the, the, yeah. That old the woman was pretty were... sketchy. Yeah, and they had like fires, and I drank their, I drank their weird potions. I think I got luckily Sale was there to save me with the Ocean Man. And it, there was tentacles coming out at the beach and like pulling some of the cult members in and ripping them apart. It was crazy. Sale and Ocean Man saved me. Okay, and then the bears, Milram. Just dumb luck, I guess. What were you doing out there in the woods? Last I saw, you were sleeping right next to me. I went on a walk, and then four bears just started running at me. It's fucking crazy. Walking in the woods at night, that makes sense. I okay. know what you were doing out there. <laughs> okay. You went for a sneaky wank, didn't you? Yeah, I know, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me, Archie, you caught me, all right? All right, I'll Kevin. Head into the woods. Oh. I'll go for a wank, no, I feel you. <laughs> if you did that, that means the dryads watched you well, why do you think Wait, i did it it's kind of hot yeah so where did the dryads come from and what the fuck is a dryad they just walk through the trees they're like they're forest bitches you know they're hot they come after you guys killed the bears oh, or hot. they put oh. the bears to sleep right they were we sleeping. killed two bears and then they put two to sleep killed that bear i jumped on its back i stabbed it through its spine and the motherfucker came behind me and killed me what the hell we gotta cut its head off, Captain. This place is fucked up. We need to get out of here. This island is cursed or some shit. The witches must have done it. Let's, Let's get off the this boat place. In. Let's go. Let's not come back. I we knew the people the on this ones, island were this way one. too friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Captain, right. I kind of want to go visit uh, the island with nothing on it that's desolate. The Dryads were talking that uh, about it, how a stare, apparently. Ruined the island. They don't it's know. It's probably why. the White Prince, right? She said it was a stare himself. Who we came down spend, and touched the island? We could spend days or even a week or two exploring, I think. This plan with Starbuck might be more fruitful. Okay. We'll put it to a vote, though. What do you two think? I say to Sail and Archie. You want to spend some time checking over that place? <laughs> what was our plan with Starbuck again? We go there, we have a chat with him, see if we can't talk him into feigning, pulling away his blockade. And... You, know, you know, Captain, I, I was going to go with, uh, you know I always got your back for a plan, but, mm -hmm. you know, those forest ladies, they really made a good point last night. I think we should probably go with what they have to say. What, did they team. want us to, they said that we should go to that place? Well, it just kind of made it sound like it, right, uh, Magic Man? Isn't that what they... Say again? 
Isn't isn't that what they isn't that what the forest ladies were were kind of talking about? Is the island? They were talking about the island, yeah. They think yeah. we should go there. Well, they didn't say we should go there. They said that <clears throat> Astaire touched that place and ruined it. I don't know yeah. if there's anything we'll find, but there must be a reason, right? Could it not just be some shit like the the place with the the fort where he sent all the undead and just ruined it because they were rebelling or something? It could be, hmm. but when I asked about it, it seemed like he actually physically touched the island, like Malchus physically turned those bears on us, which they made it seem is a very incredibly rare event. Okay, what do you think, Sal? I'll need to consult my god before I make this decision, although my bias is against going to Starbuck. And I, can I do a read omen? Or omen mm -hmm. reading? Mm -hmm. uh, I ask, will the land or sea bear fruit for us? Which of... Uh, how do I even phrase that? Well, we'll bear the greater fruit, land or sea? Yeah, basically. Here is my omen reading. Oh. Oh, wait, do you roll that in private? I am supposed to roll it in secret. Oh, my bad. That's right. Base. My bad. Never mind. <laughs> Saved. Sneak Lucky. in a second roll. <laughs> Threw that die across the room. It's quite good because you roll it, and then if you pass, you just say, oh, can we just take that roll? But if you fail, you're like, oh, Neil, you're not meant to roll that one. <laughs> True. Big brain. Big brain. <laughs> No, because if I roll it, I always know what the answer is. Sure. Mm, yeah, yeah. You uh, take a handful of sand under the water and sprinkle it in the tide pool. And you can see that as it drops, it forms like two mountain ridges um one close to you close to the shore and one you know deeper into the pool um and the two ridges are are fairly similar in height but the one closer to you on land is just like a little bit bigger than the one out to sea i uh, i'll return to the party and uh i vote we go to the desolate island all right <clears throat> yeah, all right, let's do it. We'll check it out. I mean, with all the weird shit that's been happening in this place, maybe uh, maybe there's something to it. Might as well. Maybe all of the, the crazy events of last night were... Uh, we were. Maybe it was meant to happen to us to get us to consider this or something. I don't know. Fuck it. If Starbucks gone by then, he's gone. Maybe that would, there's more to explore around here, so... It's fine. But, uh... I'm still kind of wounded. Maybe I should use another healing self. Oh, at the start of today, I would like to dispel my third level spell and learn accelerate healing, and I'll cast it on Captain nice. Winners, so he'll heal faster every day. Excellent. Okay, so what will that get me? Uh, roll the one d four to see how many days you heal at twice speed. Yeah. Rip times. I can cast it again tomorrow. Okay, so I'm gonna get double healing, which means I guess I just use a f fuck. I think do I just use a full healing self here, or should I just stay out of combat? You just stay out of combat. I think you're fine. Okay. I'm gonna recast uh... armor on me. Armor on you. Yeah. I'll expel okay. um, two magic missiles today, and I'll cast armor on you. Or I'm gonna have three magic missiles and yeah, that's fine. Yep, armor on Archie and on to. Yep. Cap. I'm also gonna like expel a few of my other spells, but I'll just like do that in the background. It's like just like create water, in no time. I need to get myself like a short bow proficiency or something. These situations. Um. All right. I uh. I will. Now, like, give up my position at the front of the party, but we, I think we, we go into the boat and we aim to sail north around the island mm. and to the so desolate island. Do one of these north around this island, and then are you going to just 
land at one spot? Are you going to sail around the whole thing? Which spot do you want to land at? What is your approach to exploring this new land? Keeping aware that Port Jasper is right here, yeah. so... We're here, any... so couldn't we just go over here? Yeah, we could. Yeah, okay. We can totally. Just yeah, mm -hmm. let's land, land about there between the two mountain ranges. Great. On the back side of the island, between the two mountain ranges, and you look out across the thing, um, the distance between these mountains has got to be like 10 miles or something like that. So it's probably similar distance, maybe a little bit less side to side. Um, as soon as you set foot in this place, you can feel the like alkalinity of the soil at your feet. Whoever's wearing sandals, I assume someone's wearing a sandals. Um, the, you know, the ground here is definitely devoid of any nutrients that could hold life. Um, the wind blows this place kind of dry and, and, uh, hastily kicking up little bits of sand and blowing it on you within 15 minutes of being here you notice your clothes all have like this light dusting to them this light white dusting to them uh, you're not going to find any water in this place by the looks of it or if you do it might be dirty or contaminated in some way shape or form so you're going to have to load up some of your water skins from your boat and probably some food from your boat as well in case something happens and you need to spend some time out here how many days worth of provisions would you like to take, knowing that each day is about four pounds of provisions? How far across is the island? Mm, less than ten miles. You could get take there and back a day if it were flat, easy to walk ground. Let's take three days. Yeah. Okay. Everyone loads up with 12 pounds of gear and puts it in their bags and heads out across the area. You quickly leave the shore behind, and as soon as the sound of the crashing waves is in your rearview mirror, um, you feel like you've entered sort of another world situation. It's dry. It's unbearably dry for how close you are to the ocean. The wind picks up and sort of swirls and then dies and is very still and then rolls down off the mountains and whips across the plain here. It is a decent half-day hike to the edge of a dry lake bed. Um, the whole thing dips down below. You can see like the area where once the water would have rested. There's some reddish rock with uh, water lines that are like bleached white below and reddish rock above. And then the rest of the area is sort of like sandy, silty depression that would form this, this sea, f this uh, lake bed. From your position on this lake bed, you can gaze out across and notice that there are ruins on the other side of the lake bed. There is some sort, like this whole area between these mountains is flat, is really, really, really flat. Um, and then on the other side of this lake bed, there is some sort of like slight mounded something and then flat again in all directions. All right. Well, I think we go to the uh, ruins, right? Do you walk across the depression of the dried lake bed, or do you take the time to walk all the way around it? I think we walk around. Mm. How, I mean, how deep yeah, is it? Yeah, whatever the captain says. Because I don't, I mean, if it's too deep, we struggle to climb up the other side. Well, I mean, you know, it's sort of dipped. It looks like if everything is normal, you should be able to walk down and across and back up again. At its but, deepest sorry, is it, is point, it it's a few hundred feet. Is it, is it rocks? Uh, sand and silt. Yeah, so I think uh, it's too risky, right? We might not be able to climb back up the other side. Let's just go around. All right. Yeah. yeah I walk around. You make um, your way most of the way around. Go ahead, Sail. While we're walking, you know that dust that's like sticking to us? Mm -hmm. Can I like try to take a handful of it? and like try to use it to cast a spell to see if it works yes what spell would you like to cast uh, i'm just gonna cast light on my mm. hand basically yeah it doesn't work at all do i get to keep my spell like it's just it's a you do yeah yeah you're okay. like you pull out the sand the, the dust mm. and you try to use it and the magic does not flow okay um, you make your way around the dry lake bed. Partway through the day, a large dust storm kicks up just huge plumes, and you all have to bunker down for an hour or two in the sandstorm. You can't see more than, I don't know, 
six inches, maybe a foot in front of your face. You can't see each other even. Uh, your eyes, your mouth, your ears, everything gets covered with this like thick dust to the point that you just have to hide on the ground with your eyes closed and something covering your mouth so that you can even breathe. When the dust storm passes, you and all your companions are just like covered head to toe in this white dust, like plastered. Your hair is thick mm. and goopy and like stands in place. It's just, you know. Do I have any a- guess what this dust is? It's maybe I'm curious just. Spell component. Uh, do you have a spellcraft proficiency? Um, I have spellcraft, yeah. Give me a spellcraft check. Okay, and you are third, fourth, fifth level. Fifth level. Yeah, you don't recognize this component anywhere. It might be a higher level spell, or it might just be, you know, the dust Have left I behind. Have ever seen anything like this before? No. Okay, I'm gonna no. take a bag of it. Wait, are, we, are you saying we've never seen anything like the dust before? What's so odd about it? You've never seen a landscape like this before, I don't think. Right, sure. Oh, the, have the, I ever seen anything like this dust before? Well, it's sort of um, alkaline. You can feel it sort of like eating at your exposed skin when it's in large quantities. It coats everything pretty tightly. It's a different sort of dust than you've encountered before. Yes. I don't know if it's like necessarily worthy of your attention, but it is different. You know, it's like if you go to the Sahara... Um, and all of a sudden you're like walking in a sandstorm and that sand is going to be very different than the sand you find at a beach but it's still like a big sandy thing I don't know if that if it's important that it's different sand but it is different I take Um, five pounds of it okay you load up bags full of it what do you want me to call it five pounds Um, monchere dust thank you (laughs) alright once the storm passes I, uh, like, motion to, like, if we've still got daylight left, like, let's try and get to the shelter so that we don't mm-hmm. have to sleep in any storm like that. Mm-hmm. Um, coming around the lake, you will find sort of small dunes, not large, but small, large enough, you know, we're talking, like, on the order of inches, that it does make your passage slow. Um, and you will find yourself having to make camp in the wide open how far are night. we? We, uh, if we got any more light spells, we can cast. It uh, is... I still have it, yep. Yeah, like if we can, uh, maybe use a light spell, we might be able to make it there in the dark. It's another few miles to the place, but you're going at this like slow rate because of the the soft soil and sand underneath you that just like eats up all your energy as you step. There's there's nothing to rebound with. Um, it is three nights before the full moon, so it's pretty bright out. If you wanted to force march this into the night, you could do it. Like you've got the vision. There's and there's nothing in the way to like block the the moonlight. Nothing in the way to confuse your path. Um, but then you would be arriving in the ruins late at night during the dark while you're exhausted. Well, if that's not a warning. I don't, I don't know. know. I haven't heard one. I don't know what it is. So, yeah, okay, let's uh, let's try and make a makeshift camp. I don't know what we can do in order to achieve that. Um, you know, maybe, I actually like, feel like we need to... Use our backpacks to make, like, shelters against the sand. I, I feel like we should go there. I don't think, lay, like, laying in the sand dune is going to be the best bet. Just, this is where you're going to get attacked, I think, by monsters. Not in, like, ruins. I think you're more likely in the dunes. But it's your something call. there. There could be some sort of beast, undead, or some crazy stuff. Last time we saw a place like this, we got attacked by a revenant. Almost like my could throat ripped out. As well, if mm. the White Prince or his there had something to do with this. Mm. Have we seen any natural wildlife on this island? Like, is there any no. insects... No insects, no birds. I don't think we're gonna get attacked in the night. I uh, appreciate it's a risk, but I, I think yeah, I want to try and stack our backpacks against each other to make like a little wall mm-hmm. to maybe protect against the sand. And if the like sandstorm starts, maybe we can just like rotate around the bag wall to get in the right 
side of it from wherever the sun is coming across. Something. Okay. Will everyone make me constitution checks through the night? Ugh. This con should have been 16, so it could have been a... I don't remember what it's called. An the invoker. Yes. Those of you that fail will be at a minus one on your checks the next day. You wake up exhausted, dehydrated, um, like your head is beginning to hurt. And, you know, like you've got that like mild headache that just stays with you the whole day. Um, all your checks are at minus one while you're in this um, sort of worn including out. Including attacks. Yes. Anytime you roll a d20, essentially. When I wake up and feel like shit, um, I'm going to use the... I'm going to use a full healing solve on myself. Just on your I open like wounds? You, yeah, I just feel like you you wake up feeling that bad, like, mm -hmm. just going to do it. So I, I heal myself from nine. Yeah. Is, is, You're this kind, is, is this the kind of fatigue that I could dispel with a spell? And the, I know that? There's only one way to find out. He does, he's, ex, he's expressing to you, like, exhaustion and tiredness, and you can see it in his eyes. Um... If it's natural fatigue, you should be able to dispel it. If it's magical yeah. fatigue, probably not. Well, I say I yeah. like you. I fuck. I didn't sleep all night. So I'll, uh, I'll cast wind column. Oh, wait, no, actually, mm. that might be useful in a sandstorm. To like, yeah, I'll get rid of protection from evil. I'll like cast it into the uh, void. Cast, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'll take a dispel fatigue and then cast that on Captain Winters. Excellent. Um, Captain Winters, you, you find your fatigue quickly slipping from you, uh, and you are fine. No more penalties. Sail, this blessing is uh, marvelous. I feel like I had a perfect night's sleep. It's like, well, thank you. my god has our back. Uh, would you like me to accelerate your healing again, Captain? Yeah, please. Do, did I heal 2 HP last night, Neil? Accelerated healing was cast on you. It was a long day of walking, but it wasn't particularly strenuous. Yeah, you can get two HP for last night. That's fine. Cool. All right, I'm almost full. Yeah, I'll give, um, him, I'll give him another accelerate. <clears throat> All right. I, I just realized I'm damaged too. Um, how much am I healing? You heal one a day. One a day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to 24. I should be fine. You got more health than me anyway. Uh, Nilrum, did you refresh Archie's I armor? did. I refreshed both of them, yeah. Great. Oh, it's a new day. Cool. I can get rid of that spell then. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We have four magic missiles now. Excellent. Okay. A couple um, hours later, you arrive <laughs> at the ruins of a curtain wall that must have wrapped around a town once upon a time. You can see that the distance from this uh, inlet here to the lake is not particularly far, and the wall stretches all the way from the lake to the inlet. It's maybe like a, a mile, so it's a, a good distance, but there's a, a, you know, the ruins of a curtain wall here tossed down. The wall could have been, who knows, 30 feet high maybe in its heyday, and now it's just like a, a 10 foot high pile of rubble broken down, sometimes in your direction, sometimes in the other direction, sometimes just crushed and broken in both places. There are the barren layout of a city, of city streets before you, some sort of wheel or spoke shaped um, town once resided here. As you stand Ar at the edge of the wall, looking into the threshold, or at the threshold of the wall, looking into the town, we will end our session for the day and come back next right. week inside Sweet. the ruins of this unknown, desolate town. And that will wrap us up. So congratulations, everybody, for surviving everything today. We'll get you some experience next time you're back at base, resting and relaxing and recuperating. Uh, and before we go, I'd like to... We didn't really get to hear Nick's opinion on the, the dryads when they were there because he was unconscious. So can we get a little bit of uh, thoughts from you, Captain Winters? In, in character or out of character? As you please, whichever. Well, I think, like, in character, I just... It's the whole thing sounds so unbelievable that he's just not really sure what to make of it. Mm. And I think he's kind of going along with this plan to go to the silence to try and work out like what the hell happened because between the cult 
people being dragged down into the sea, magical bears appearing with the eyes of swirling red vortexes, and then dryads turning up and sleeping the bears. Like, what the hell? Like, that, eat any one of those individual like, things happening would be massively noteworthy in the life of John Winters. Never mind, like, all four happening within one night. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just doesn't make any sense. Um, no one's told him that he, I was almost dragged away to be the sex slave of the Dryads, right? No. Yeah, so, you know, I think if I knew that, I don't know, I don't know how I would feel about that. Maybe disappointed in a curious way, but probably grateful that I wasn't sold into slavery. Mm. Um, oh, we could have sold him. We could have, we could have sold him for information on the fountain. The of fountain youth. of youth. That's what I thought you were gonna do. <laughs> no, that would have been a real dick move. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I don't really know what John would think of it. Um, it does in out of character. It seems kind of odd that dryads would turn up and save our ass at the last minute. Mm. I don't know. There's some chaotic shit going on. Mm. Okay. Well, that'll be it. Unless there's something someone else has to say. Use your Twitch Primes. Patreon. Yeah. Subreddit. Mm. Patreon, subreddit. Questions on, on Koibu's subreddit. Oh, did we have questions, actually? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mr. Mooton. In a couple weeks. Um, yes, we have... Three. He's already in the queue for League. No, I just didn't know if we had any answer <laughs> these. I wasn't sure. Uh, for Mooton, does no miss his parents at all? Is he thankful for what they did for him? Does he want to try and visit them sometime soon? Um, no one probably doesn't think about his parents too much. I just think that they were people in his life who, you know, helped him out. Uh, but he probably doesn't view them as anything noteworthy. You know, they're just simple servants. So I think Norm is like extremely self-centered and selfish and probably just doesn't since the parents have no impact on his life it's like why would they even cross his mind Norm felt bad for winters and that's why he didn't send him to slavery because he mm. was the one who did it so it's a very uh it's a humbling moment for Norm though it's probably the first time he's ever had a shred of human decency i would imagine yeah it was humbling but he yeah. you know he had his moment with uh malchus at the end he ate the eyeball and winked at him he sees what he's yeah. doing i think Another backstory question for Sale. How much does he think about his brother and mother? Um, how committed is he to finding his family? Is that something he wants to ask Rohi for an aid of? Or has that fallen away because of his unholy mission and the new powers he has been granted? Um, Sale does not think very much about his family. Uh, he... And it might be down to the fact that making a pact with, with Rohi changed him. Um, but he still cares for his mother, but he never really got along with his brother. I think he is more focused on, well, for a long time it was survival, and now it's more like um, actually disrupting the White Prince and doing things of that nature and protecting, obviously, his crew too. Mm -hmm. Last question. For Mooton, does Norm care if his actions will lead to negative consequences for the other players? <clears throat> for the party, do you fear Norm doing something that might one day get another player killed? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Norm, Norm doesn't think it's... about other people too much. Um, out of character, I don't want to get anybody else killed. I don't mind if Norm dies, but I'm not super keen on like getting John killed for Norm's dumb actions. Um, so I would feel bad if that happened. But in character, Norm doesn't really care if nilram wants to know something he'll do it as i think showcased this episode and then the party right well that'll be it then we will see you all next week with more tides of death see you next week guys bye bye, bye. next week bye bye adios